Good day. Bob here at Weldon Rust, and it's out with the rust, out with the lead, and we got some new structure. So stick around. What I've done is I put this piece on the back just to see what we're working with. I measured from the floor down on both sides, measured from this corner to this corner to get it positioned. Remember in the other video I mentioned this fender looked like it was about two inches shorter. You can kind of see the gap here and nothing there. What I think has happened is this thing got into a pretty bad smack up. With this kind of contraption being bolted on, you found a mess here and the mess underneath. But you might not be able to see it very clearly, but the curve of the bottom of both fenders is different. And the real telltale is this bit of rippling right here. What I suspect happened is when they put this piece on or tried to straighten it out, they didn't get it quite in the right spot. So when they went to put, I'm assuming, a new fender on at some point, they couldn't get it to fit, so they had to bend it a bit to get it to fit. Oh, is to what I got to cut off here and same on the other end, equal amounts off of it because I've got to cut this way. And once I got to cut away, I lose my center mark, which was using the latch for the center. So that's going to get cut away. I'm probably going to cut this out and that way the fender can move. Put the piece in here, held it up with a jack stand, level with the end of the rusty bit, clamped it to it. Now, where I've determined this edge to be, is I followed along, not the fender line, but the other part of the body line, followed it down, and that's where I determined that piece to be. Our next bit of fun is I gotta make the pattern for the piece that's going to go in here, I'm going to tack it in here with a notch and notch so I can get this relative to this. And if I make two pieces the same, the other end will be right where I want it. So now we got to make a couple of duplicate parts. We'll have to excuse a bit of the background noise. Plasma cutters do make a bit of noise. So what I'm going to do, I found a chunk of material I had lying around. My plan is, I know this is not that precise, but it doesn't need to be. That's what I'm going to do. The size isn't as critical as that if they're being identical. I'll show you in a bit what I plan on doing. So I etched it out. Let's just spin on something here. Been chewed up a little bit. But my little plasma cutter 
This width in here is 7 eighths of an inch. So the center line to the edge is about 7 sixteenths. What I'm going to do is wherever I see a line, I'm going to make it about a half an inch away from there. Half inch block sanding. Should get another one. Sure, I've got something in here. That'll do. If we keep it half an inch away from the line, that'll make the whole part a little bit oversized. So when I tack the two pieces together and I do my finished grinding, so that way they're identical. Okay, this is a little bit more crude than I normally work, but I'm kind of in a hurry to get this done. The important thing is that these notches, there's enough material on here, as you can see there is, that I can grind off where the notches are. I'm going to tack these two pieces together so they're the same. Grind off where the notches are and that the notches are match the template. The outside here doesn't matter. I ain't worried about that. What we have to do now is make our marks. I'm going to probably go about an inch away from here. So I'll make my mark here, make my measurement, find my center line here between here and here, and then do the same thing. So all my points are the same distance from the center line. Okay. I've got my layout lines done. And equal distance apart. The other thing is, when I laid out this line, I also laid this line square coming down. I'm going to rely on these to get where I want it. That's why it was so important to make them the same. See, if I go by my line, see what I do is I'm going to have this sitting in here as it's resting in here. All right? This is where I wish I had a third hand. Is this is important that it's square. So this being square with this, hopefully this will stay in relation to this, which is what I want. And wherever these things flop around to, you're just going to end up where they end up with that. The trick's going to be trying to hold everything together when I try and tack it in. All right.
Okay. Little tip, when I'm welding blind, what I usually do is I just use the cup, kind of hold it in place, and I just squeak my gun a little bit while I'm running it. That way I don't have to look and see what I'm doing. I'll give you another one, though. That, I think, is going to hold. You have a little wiggle, but not a whole lot. Okay, it's break time. Well, we've got a bunch of rust removed. We've got some structure we can build from now. Try to get things even on both sides this time. Yeah, it looks like we actually got something done today. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you guys for subscribing, and we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye for now.